Okay, so here we have the oil pressure release valve and the anti-drain valve. Oil pressure release valve goes in there. I think you can just see that here. And the uh, anti-drain valve goes up uh, under here. So the um, oil pressure release valve, pretty straightforward. It's just got a, a sort of plunger. Uh, with a spring when the oil pressure is too high it, the plunger is pushed back opening the uh, extra oil ways and allowing the oil to be diverted away from the, um, the big ends etc and then as the oil pressure drops so the spring the plunger goes close up the oil way and uh, so all the oil goes to the um, crankshaft so the, the only thing you've really got to check on this is that the plunger isn't seized in the in the housing, so that it's nice. Um, you know, it goes it goes in. Got a little bit of coat hanger wire, so it goes down, and then you have got the gauze, and you can just poke it back up again. <clears throat> just make sure it's running. Uh, you know, it's not seized. Also, um, apparently, on originally, this this wide gauze. That signifies that this is for a trident, whereas a fine gauze would be for a, a Bonville. Um, now, what the difference between them is, I don't know, but apparently there was a difference. This has got, you probably can't see it, but this has got uh, 70 stamped in the top here. And that's the, that's the pressure at, at which the valve opens at 70 PSI. But anyway, uh, on these, uh, so... Uh, the um, supplier was telling me, and I hope he was right, that um, they're, they're all the same now. So you don't buy one for a Trident, one for a Bonville, they're the same. So I don't know. But anyway, this is the original with the wide cores, and we're reusing that. No need to change it. So quite simply, the plunger goes in there. Okay. And then we've got the uh, outer, well, the, the sort of the first um, fiber washer that goes against the engine. So that is only just sort of big enough. So you have to kind of like screw it on. There you go, just on there. Okay, and that's going to go in the engine. And then we've got the spring. Whoops, hopefully got the spring. Then we've got the second washer, which is the fiber washer, which is going on the cap. And then the cap screws on. It does screw on. It does screw on. There we go. And so then what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to screw the, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw the uh, body on and then I'm going to screw the cap on. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I might just put a little bit of sealant on. You see this, the threads in two parts. <clears throat> I might put a little bit of sealant on the rear thread the sort of upper thread, I don't want to put it on the lower thread because as it's screwed in, that will serve to block up the oil ways, which obviously we don't want to happen. So I might put a little bit, just so, only just, I don't want it to leak and I don't want it to come unscrewed. I have heard of these coming loose <clears throat> and then of course leaking oil all over the back wheel, which isn't great. So uh, yeah, I've got a little bit of uh, medium thread locker, I'll put that on. Just a tad. There we go. And I'll start screwing that in. As I said, uh, I said earlier, I, I deliberately didn't put this in, so that I the idea is I can I can get it tight, but it gives you know I can hold on to the engine and it'll give me something to uh, to get this tight. So that's why I didn't do it before. So I'm going to put that. Um, uh, Get a socket and uh, then we'll put that in. So I'm just going to uh, loosely screw that in now. Uh, there's no uh, torque setting on this, so I'm just going to do it fairly tight.
That should be fine. Put the spring in. Check we've got the plunger in. Yes, we have. Spring goes in. And then the cap. Oh, nearly forgot the washer. Washer. Uh, and again, I'll probably put a little bit of thread lock on. I tend to do that. A, stop it coming loose. But B, to help uh, seal it from oil leaks. Not sure how effective it is, but it's something I've always done. Put the cap on. nice and tight well done now we've got the controversial bit we've got the oil pressure sorry we've got the anti-drain valve this is the anti-drain valve so the idea is uh, there's an oil way in the bottom of the uh, aperture and the idea is that the ball bearing sits in that oil way and stops the oil coming out and this is a very, very light spring. And then the idea is when the engine's going, that the uh, oil pushes the ball bearing out of the way and the oil flows. And then when the engine stops, the ball bearing shush, comes, springs back out and seals the seals the uh, oil way. The problem is it doesn't work. Very simple, yeah, it's a great idea, but it doesn't work. Basically, the oil leaks past the ball bearing. Uh, I've heard of different sort of fixes. I, I'm not sure. I've tried, people say what you can do is heat, you know, is, is get the ball bearing in the bottom of the, uh, of its housing and like hammer it in to, to, to try and get a really good seal on it. Or, you know, to somehow grind that out a bit. So that the, because basically the ball bearing isn't seating fully, so the oil seeps past it. You can't put a stronger spring on because of course, you want the oil way to open, and the last thing you want to put a stronger spring on, then you know the oil way isn't going to open, <laughs> and you certainly don't want that. So the problem is, therefore, the engine wet sumps. That means all the oil from the oil tank drains into the stump, into the engine, which you don't really want. Um, and it can happen very quickly. In some cases, it can be a week or a couple of weeks, or you know even even sooner. Um, can be up to you know, a few months but it, it happens so what we're doing on this engine is we are getting rid we are going getting rid of the original oil uh, anti-drain valve and we're fitting an anti-drain valve in the oil tank which works it doesn't drain it um, you know the oil doesn't drain into the engine and um, that, that's great however it is controversial We'll come on to it a bit more in a minute when I come to fit it. But basically, this uh, anti-drain valve is pushed open. You, there's the pump and then the valve. So the pump pumps the oil and pushes that open. Having, a, having an anti-drain valve in the tank is before the pump. So the pump sucks the valve open. And some people will say, oh, well, that's not that reliable. You know, uh, uh, I wouldn't trust it. Well... I've got it on three of my four bikes. I haven't got it on the fourth bike because that's a that that is a wet sump bike. In other words, the oil, the oil is in the engine anyway. That's a Kawasaki. There's no oil tank, <laughs> so there is no anti-drain valve because there is no oil tank. I've had it in my three bikes. I've got them all in my three bikes, and they work fine. That's all I can say. But it is controversial. Some people would say never to do it, and some people, you know, some people whose advice I respect a great deal will say not to do it. Um, as I say, I've got it in all my bikes and uh, I haven't had a problem. Um, what are the problems with um, wet something? Well, uh, the only real problem you've got with wet something is if all the oil drains into the wet, into the sump, which can happen relatively quickly, as I say. And then the problem is there's no oil in the tank. So that when you start the engine, the pump, there's, there's nothing, there's no oil there for the pump uh, to pump because all the oil's sitting 
ironically the oil's in the engine but it's not it's not under pressure it's just sitting in the sump sloshing around and until the oil is pumped back into the tank and then gets back down to the pump then there's no oil pressure so for 30 seconds or whatever on startup you've got no oil pressure at all so that's probably the most dangerous thing um apart from the annoying thing that it, that um <clears throat> uh you know you've got your your, your sump full of oil on, on a trident it doesn't matter that much because the pistons are going up and down in an even way so you're not generating crankcase pressure unlike a um the, the commando which both is 180 degree crank so both the pistons go up and down at the same time you get crankcase pressure so as both pistons go down they pressurize the crankcase and if that's full of oil it can encourage oil leaks so that's not really the case on the trident um some people what you can do because on a trident the um the engine oil is, is, sorry the, the oil in the primary chain case is shared with the engine oil there's no oil seal on the uh, on the crankshaft all the oil that's in the engine runs through into the primary chain case so what some people do is they undo the primary chain case <clears throat> drain some of the oil out of that and then put it back in the tank because what you don't want to do is top up if there's no oil in the, in the tank pour oil in because then when the oil is pumped back from the engine then it'll all overflow because you've got too much oil but for my money it's a lot of faffing about but you pay your money you take your choice the owner of this has decided, yeah, okay, let's fit an anti-drain valve in the tank. Now, what you don't want is two anti-drain valves because then you could be in trouble. So what all we do is we simply leave that out and then we've got a new crush washer and we're simply going to put the plug in without the inners. Simple as that. Okay. Uh, and people can be as controversial as they like about it, but that's, uh, you know, it's one of those. There's, uh, there'll, there'll never be a, a definitive answer to it. People either, it's Marmite, you either love them as I do, these, you know, in tank anti drain valve, or you hate them. You know, people say, oh, you know, if there's a, uh, you know, it could be that it, it goes to suck oil and there's, a, there's, an, uh, there's an air lock and it can't suck the oil. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's never, ever happened on my bikes, but it's a possibility. Um, but, only, you know, like anything's a possibility. <laughs> in my book, too, in all honesty. So, ah, oh, well, it could happen. Yeah, it could happen. <laughs> there could be men on the moon or on Mars, for all I know. But unlikely. Anyway, um, what you can do, and what I did on my uh, Commando, was to, I fitted a um, oil pressure gauge. So I now know definitively um, whether or not I've got oil pressure. So as soon as the bike starts up, uh, you know, I know that I've got oil pressure on the 716s. Um, so if you're worried at all about oil pressure, then put an oil pressure goes then you can tell straight away. So I did it on the Commando. Of course, on the Trident and that, you've got the oil pressure warning light. So, you know, the first thing you do is when you start up, watch that light. If it doesn't go out, whew, turn things off. It's never, ever happened to me. It's never, ever. That light has never, ever gone off, like the oil pressure warning light. But yeah, that's, you know, but if you, uh, you see on the commando, on the commando, there isn't an oil pressure warning light. There's nothing, so you don't know if you've got oil pressure or not. And that's why I fitted a. Um, um, sorry, that's what I'm doing. Two things at once. That's why I fitted the oil pressure gauge because um, you, you you wouldn't know whether you've got oil pressure or not. I'm just trying to find the right socket to do this up. Yeah, so it's not fouling on the uh, sump plate. Okay. Um, but yeah, you, you know, I'm not, uh, you know, some, <laughs> I'd like to think I'm an easygoing guy, you know, I'd like to say to you, look, it's up to you and you want to fit one, then fit it. If you don't, don't, no, if you don't want to fit one, don't fit one. You don't have a go at me for fitting one. You know, I'm, I'm sorry. It does, it gets me sometimes. You don't want to do that. Uh, yes, I did. That's why I did it. Oh no, you've got me going now. I'll stop. Uh, what am I looking for? Oh, dear. I've gone off on a rant and I've lost what I'm thinking what I'm doing. Right, here we go. I've got my little, uh, here we go. I've got the crush washer there, so that's going to crush down. Don't have to worry about it. They generally don't leak or anything, these. And there we go. There we go. 
So we've got the uh, the last two items fitted that we're going to fit to the uh, uh, crankcase. And so now we're ready to put the crankcases, complete the crankshaft, into the uh, uh, motorcycle frame. And then we're going to finish off building the engine in the frame. The reason I'm doing that is I think it's just easier. I'm going to, to lift this in as it is now rather than finish building the engine and then try and lift it in. Um, which he, I, I, I might better do this by myself. Um, I might get a neighbor to help me. But even when it's finished, even with two people or three people, it's, it's an awkward job because when you get three people, well, you're just in each other's way. So, you know, it doesn't matter how, how many people you've got, there's only like one or two people can actually lift. Um, anyway, that's why we're doing it. We're putting the engine in so that I can build, I'll finish off building the rest of the engine in the frame. It'll just hopefully be easier that way. Okay, there we go for now.